Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, it's another episode of something. We'll figure it out someday, the title. Uh, we help you with Google Ads. Yes. There we go. <laughs> to the yeah, uh, fancy. Today we're going to talk about timing, because timing's, timing is an issue that I run into a lot, especially when we're evaluating campaigns. You always see the weirdest windows <laughs> applied to ad campaigns, and you look at it, and you're like, why on earth? Like, what would have possessed you to do that? I want to run on Tuesday from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Why? I have a good feeling. And the funny part is, the funny part is too, is it won't even track conversions. I'm like, so what are you basing this off of? He's like, the stars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just always something random. And so, yeah, it, uh, it's, a, it's a question we get asked often um, during the sales process, when we start off with a new client, whatever it may be, um, there's always a question of, okay, so when should I run my ads? And that's actually a question that we ask in our um, onboarding form. And a lot of times they're just like, you know, you choose, you, you know what's best. Mm -hmm. And so, Knowing that we often get asked this question and we often answer it, um, I figured it'd be great to make a video and just kind of educate the masses as to what you need to do um, starting off, what the process should look like, and then how to optimize when to show your ads to the world. Let's do it. Great. Right. Cool. This is thrilling for me. <clears throat> I know. It's riveting. All right. Share my screen here. So uh, again, using the campaign uh, that we're obviously hiding the, the name of the campaign, the account, so for privacy protection, but we spent a fairly good amount since April 1st uh, and today's June 11th, but from April 1st through June 9th, we spent $17,000, um, have 834 conversions and 30% uh, conversion rates. So we have a lot of data to work with and that's key. You wanna have data to start off with. And the reason why you want to have data to start off with <clears throat> is you're going to go to a very specific spot in Google to see where, what you need to monitor in order to identify, okay, this is the times that are good and these are the times that are bad. And not a lot of people know about this area. And so the first thing you need to know is that you'll need to track conversions first and foremost. And you'll need to have a little bit of time. Usually the 30 to 60 days is what you want to run at 24-7 unless you're <clears throat> only running call campaigns for some reason, which is a bad idea anyway. And you can only answer the phone between you know, nine and five. Then you pretty much know you can't have a call coming in at one o'clock in the morning, it's just not gonna happen. But if you have like a form fill on your site, if you have like a lead magnet, if something like a tripwire or, or something that people can um, interact with, like a contact form or whatever it may be, anything that they don't physically need you there, which is why you're running digital marketing anyway, uh, it's best to start with 24 hours. And look at this section. Uh, I clicked into a campaign <clears throat> And under the, uh, in the second uh, vertical navigation bar, you'll see add schedule. And this is where you can um, adjust what days and times that you're eligible to show your ads for. And this account, it's fairly new. It's about, we're about three months in, we're making tweaks in other directions. Um, he likes to run 24 seven. And I actually think that it's a good idea to run 24 seven. But I wanted to share with you, if you wanted to optimize this campaign or only show during the best times, you're going to look at a uh, section called day and hour. Now, again, make sure you're looking at one campaign. Otherwise, you're going to have like all campaigns at, at every hour, every day, and it just kind of gets convoluted. So pick a campaign first. Go to add schedule. Click on day and hour. <clears throat> make sure you're giving yourself enough window of time, at least you know one to two months, so you have enough data to work with. And then sort by conversions. And what this will show you is the day and time when most of the conversions took place. So we can see that Tuesday, between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m., we have a 39% conversion rate, 10, uh, 10.3, which is actually 11 conversions. Uh, and time attribution, time decay, we'll, we'll get into that in another video. But this means 11 <clears throat> and a $23 cost per conversion. And this is lead generation. So what that instantly tells me right off the bat is, okay, well, if it's Tuesday at 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. is when most of my conversions come in, <clears throat> you'll notice up here I'm limited by budget, which means my campaign's starting to stop showing ads later in the day. Well, if my ads are stopping to show ads later in the day and late in the day is when I get most of my conversions, probably should increase my budget. That's one thing that I take away from this. Now we're running $300 a day and we're gonna be increasing that momentarily, but that's just something that, that gives you that information here. Or if you look at it and says, okay, well, what's my, what's my lowest conversion rate? So if you sort by very low conversion rates and you start to see, okay, well, I'm starting to get, you know, 20 clicks um, on Sunday between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. That cost me $128, only got me one lead and my cost per lead is 
do you still want to run Sunday at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m.? Probably not. Now let's let's look at all Sunday. Is does Sunday even give me um, good data? And let me just make sure I'm not going to pass it. There we go. So looking at um, let me open this up a little more. Looking at Sunday, <clears throat> how's your cost? Uh, how's your cost per lead? Okay. Well, Sunday between 10 and 11 is horrible, um, but everything else looks pretty good. Now Sunday between six and seven dinner time, I spent you know quite a few of my cost per conversions a little high. It might be out of my my um, it might be outside of the uh, uh, KPI, my goal that I'm looking, I'm like, I need to stay below $30 per lead. So maybe look at this one to start maybe, maybe pulling back on that hour or spending less during that time. Um, maybe you can run, you know, Sunday between nine to five, but between six and seven, you have another time period that you have a negative bid adjustment of 40% on. So you spend less during that time. Um, but this is a way for you to start with 24 hours, identify how many conversions come in, uh, what the cost per conversion and what the conversion rate is by day and by time. And you start to see, okay, if I run with the majority of my ad spend during the time that offer me peak performance, you start to restrict to those hours. All you're going to do is essentially just drop your cost per conversion and increase your conversion rate. You're not necessarily going to lose conversions. You probably actually gain more because you're taking that 24 hour time period that you're spending $300 a day and putting it into a 11 hour time period. Then you're spending $300 a day. So you're still going to spend the same if you have, you know, the room to spend that much money, but now you're only going to spend it during optimal times. Um, so that's kind of the first thing that you'll want to look at. Now there's Before another, on, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. I'm going to get annoying. Okay. So I'm going to be the client, uh, mm -hmm. sort by the number of conversions, please. Mm -hmm. And let's scroll all the way up. Tuesday from nine to 10 has the most conversions, but here's what I see. My, my, my I immediately goes to Tuesday from four to five has the cheapest conversions at $8 and 13 cents. Tuesday uh, from four, oh, right here. Yeah, Tuesday from four to five. So, I, you know, we're looking at conversion mm -hmm. quantity, I realize, and, and you can slice and dice data any way that you want to, but uh, I start to uh, wonder whether or not there's an apex, you know, the number of conversions and the cost per conversion and, and how deep down that rabbit hole do you go before you feel like it's a waste of time? Well, you need to have two things. Um, you need to have, I guess really not two things. One thing, you need to have enough data points. <laughs> uh, you need to have enough data points. If you look at this and you say, well, these are really cheap conversions, but there's only been six clicks. Is that enough to judge if that hour is going to be good? Hmm. Not really. Because well, so if that, what? here's another challenge, and I, I don't mean to be argumentative, but yeah. we've had five and a half, almost six conversions with six clicks and, you know, 10 conversions with 26 clicks. I'd actually call the, the six to, you know, more efficient. It's basically a hundred percent conversion ratio. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have six clicks, six conversions. I mean, we're running a hundred percent conversion rate, which is absolutely true. Um, now I'm not saying that we would, we would restrict this, but what we'd want to do is when you start to cut off the times a day that have a high amount of volume and low, <clears throat> low success, which means what is my, what's my highest cost per conversion along with enough clicks. Obviously I'm not going to, um, look at a high cost per conversion Oops, down here and say, man, we had $264 cost per conversion. Well, it's only five clicks. You want to look at what has high amount of volume like this Wednesday between nine and 10, I had 21 clicks. Okay, let's say 20 is my threshold. Well, that's a good amount to know that if everything else has about 20 and this is really, really high, mm. you shut up that time. You'll probably refunnel that ad spend to a different time. So the most important number then is conversion rate, really. Because if you sort by conversion rate, you want to maximize your conversion rate. You can maximize your conversion rate, but you can have a hundred percent conversion rate, but only one click. So you know, you have to balance kind of a, a fine balance between do I have enough data to say I can shut this off? Because it's just as important to say, do I have enough data to spend more? Those two are equally damaging if you're wrong. Right. Well, we're so, looking for is a low conversion rate with high clicks. If you have low conversion rate, high clicks, then go shut that off is what you're saying. Exactly. And, and I don't necessarily sort by clicks, sort by cost um, or even cost per conversion. Because if I look at cost per conversion, I say, man, 18 clicks and $147 cost per conversion. And that's enough volume and a, a worse enough number to say, I don't like this because I can find another, um, another time that has more than 18 clicks. Like let's say... Um, you know, kind of going down here, this one's got um, 21 clicks and it's got five conversions. So same amount of volume. One is just 10 times worse than the other. Um, and as time goes on, or as you start to 
you start to make small increment changes towards the area that you want to go into. Don't just be like, hey, everything over, you know, $30 cost per conversion, kill it. Not necessarily. You want to pick a good number to say, do I have enough times that have about 20 clicks that I can choose between the good and the bad? Yeah, the majority of these are about 20 clicks that I would start to say, okay, let's spend less. So let's just cut that out and see if that ad spend that I would have spent at that time moves to the next hour that is better and does my overall cost per conversion reduce, but my conversions stay the same. Mm. Um, so this is a way to, to kind of identify what are your what are your top areas. Now, there's a flip side of this story. We run time decay. Time decay will split a conversion between different time periods. Now you look at this one, you say, well, this is half of conversion and it's really high, $80 cost per conversion. How did I get half a conversion? I've only spent $46. Why did my conversion cost 80? Well, this is actually the second click that took place uh, of, a, of that specific conversion. So when you're running time decay, you want to find out where did the first click take place? Where did the last click take place? What is the combined total that cost per conversion? And am I going to be shutting off my interest gathering camp, uh, interest gathering time, you know, and wake up in the morning and look at my credit card bill and say, Oh my God. And start Googling debt hunch and, or some debt places and, and find out exactly where I need to go. And when they click on that ad, if they, let me restart, we're going to cut that part out. So because I said that, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna see if I could save it. And I was like, can I keep talking and then just kind of click, the, get that removed. So uh, we gotta, we gotta have this time code. Where did, what was the last thing that we, we talked about? Because I'm trying to, trying to go back in now. Uh, we were talking um, about. You said okay. The flip side. Okay. I'm gonna do this. So there's a flip side of this story though as well, is because what you want to look at is if there's split conversions like time decay which is what we always run, you're going to look at a two part story. Where did the first click take place? Where did the last click take place? Mm -hmm. And the last click that ends up being a conversion is going to be what you'll see here on the screen of 0.58. Whenever it's over 0.5, it means the last, the last click that someone took before they took an action to, to convert uh, because anything before that is going to be less weighted. Uh, just, just go with me on this one. Uh, 0.5 and above means this is the last thing that they did. So the last thing that they they did was Google a specific keyword and then convert between Wednesday 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Now that doesn't mean that this is a bad time because the cost per conversion is way too high. It just means that it was the second uh, click that day that took place and you take $46 multipl or multiplied by 0.58 because it wasn't a full conversion and that's why the cost per conversion is a little high. Sure. But what you want to look at is where did the first click take place and what time did that take place? Because if you start to shut off your interest gathering, um, if you start, start shutting off your interest gathering times, someone wakes up in the morning at nine o'clock, you know, <clears throat> has a <clears throat> has a specific need that day. And then they start to Google something and they click on a campaign ad and they find out that's the service provider that they need to need, need to go with, but they need to talk to you know, a spouse or, or, or whatever it is before they make that decision. Well, later on that day, when they've had their internal discussion with whatever family member in this scenario, <clears throat> they might Google that same keyword again, click on the ad, and then go and convert. Well, if when they wake up in the morning and you're not running that time of, you know, let's say eight to nine, they're not going to find you. So you're never going to earn that conversion later on in the day. So there's kind of a two parts to the story. Where is my best performing um, days and times? And where do also the majority of those first clicks come in from day and time? Because you can end up accidentally shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, you don't want to kill your conversion paths. Right. And it, you, you've said something earlier, but I want to touch on it again just for our listeners. It, this makes a lot of sense when you're limited by budget because you want to maximize your budget. Mm -hmm. If you're not limited by budget, I don't know that I'd go in there and I'd start slicing and dicing time because now you're, you're trying to expand and yet limiting your, your campaign. John, tell me if you disagree with that. No, you, there's a reason if you're limited by budget and you're saying, I can't spend anymore. Uh, this campaign's at $300 a day. And it's like, that's, that's as most as I can afford. Um, how do we optimize that? This is one method to do that because you can earn more conversions for the same daily spend. Um, the other scenario would be, I, I'm trying to spend $10,000 a day and I can't spend that. I can only spend $5,000 a day. How do we make my $5,000 act more like 10,000? Well, stop spending that money when conversions don't come in and you'll spend that money more efficiently during the six o'clock hour where 
more conversions than the five o'clock hour where they just is a waste as a time waster. So there's there's plausible reasons to do this when you you know, can't spend any more or uh, because you you've maxed it out or you physically can't spend any more because you're at top of your budget. Um, when you're first starting out and you're kind of identifying it, if you have room to grow, don't do this. If you're still can, if you can still add more money, don't do this. Unless you find one that's like eight o'clock on Tuesday is like a thousand dollar cost per conversion. It's been like that for a year, then yeah, shut it off. But if you're still growing um, or still early in the campaign, or if you still have more money to spend, I wouldn't do this, but it's a really good way to identify, um, you know, where you probably should start to maybe increase and decrease your ad spend by day. The other point that I'd like to make is uh, if you're in a cyclical market, be really careful about playing with dates and times. Oh yeah. There's going to be some ebb and some flow there and, and you don't know how long that's, that's, you know, that data point lasts unless you have years worth of data. Right. Or, and that's actually pretty cool too, because you can even, if you have years worth of data, you can start to see that curve coming right. where it's like, man, you know, um, the day after Christmas, one of the highest e-commerce days uh, because people that didn't get the gifts go on Google things and buy the gifts that they forgot. Uh, so whatever December 26 is, if that's a Tuesday, run that thing wide open. Right. <laughs> uh, maybe traditionally if it hurts. So you can actually say, you know what? I know this is going to come soon this holiday or it's like Father's Day. That's going to be coming up. Like I have a product that is really, you know, it's perfect for Father's Day. So run this thing seven days a week. Um, so you can, you can use it to your advantage too. If you know those ebbs and flows, or those curves or those seasonalities, you can take advantage of them using this as well. That's awesome. If you're watching and you have questions, drop them in the comments, we'll answer them. Otherwise, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Uh, we're gonna be doing this every day. Every day, the videos are anywhere from five to 20 minutes and we want you to really <laughs> dive deep into Google Ads. Everybody else hits the surface. Why are you yeah. Well, I was, I was laughing because it's either five or 20 minutes. It's however much I can stop John from rattling down. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, you want to, you want to give each topic justice. You know, we want to, yeah. want to give them their due. And I'm so sick of like the one oh one. you know, how to launch a Google ads campaign. There are enough videos about that. We don't yeah. need to do that. Like let's, let's dive into the, the, the granular, like the real <laughs> nitty gritty. And that's what we want to do. So, if yeah, you if you're looking to like how to log in, just click off now. Don't subscribe. We won't probably ever show you how to log into Google Ads. <laughs> yeah. We don't want you. You don't no. deserve us. No. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, uh, we will see y'all next time. Yep. Thank you so much.